Good evening. Coming up in Mellow TV Evening News tonight, NHT compensates residents of Ruthven Towers apartment for flood damage caused by Hurricane Ian. Government signs a memorandum of understanding for implementation of electronic health records. And now the news in detail. We begin with a Mellow TV news update this evening with reports that the National Housing Trust, the NHT, has compensated residents at the Rothburn Road apartment complex for damages to their vehicles caused by flooding from Hurricane Ian last year. The NHT has so far spent $44 million to compensate 11 of the 14 persons whose vehicles were damaged by the flood waters. The NHT says discussions with the remaining three residents are continuing. The current gate at Ruthven Towers will be replaced with a wall and a new entrance will be built. The balance of the bill will be covered by the Trust's insurance company. In the fourth supplemental estimates of expenditure, the government has set aside $10.1 billion for payments to be made to public sector employees as part of the compensation restructuring program. Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, made the declaration at the sitting of the House of Representatives yesterday. Dr. Clark added that the forecasts for the current financial year also include a $5.8 billion reduction in capital expenditure, pushing the budget for the 2022-2023 fiscal year above the trillion-dollar threshold. The supplementary estimates, Madam Speaker, uh, are just compensation related mat items up by $10.1 billion and Madam Speaker, it also has an adjustment in capital expenditure uh, downwards of $5.8 billion and those capital ex expenditure projects relate to uh, areas uh, in the public investment uh, project portfolio where projects are unlikely to be completed, or, or certainly the, the funds are unlikely to be drawn down in the next four weeks of the fiscal year, and therefore they're being reprogrammed in this way. The net impact of the expenditure adjustments for the recurrent and capital expenditure, Madam Speaker, after taking uh, these uh, two into account and some other things, is. 4.3 billion. So overall, it's a net increase in the expenditure for 2022-23 of 4.3 billion, which actually would push uh, expenditure for this year above the trillion dollar mark to 1 trillion and 2.6 billion. These adjustments are, as I mentioned, Madam Speaker, largely uh, on account of the ongoing discussions with respect to the compensation restructuring. Public sector teachers and the police are two of the largest government paid organizations that have not yet reached a settlement with the finance ministry. Minister Clark argued that holding talks with the 140 public bodies from November 2022 to present has led to what we are now experiencing. Ships should evolve. There are many in the central civil service who believe that the premium that those in the executive agencies have enjoyed over the central civil service for similar jobs, that that premium was intended to be temporary. That's the view so for some people, that executive agencies were singled out and treated separately years ago, and the compensation restructuring is an opportunity for harmonization. There are others within executive agencies who have a different view who believe that that premium uh, was not intended to be temporary and it should be extended through this exercise. The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service sits in the middle of those contending views within the public service. The civil service on one hand advance in certain positions and certain executive agencies advance in others. The process of resolving these, Madam Speaker, necessarily, necessarily across 140 public bodies to be done in a single financial year, in fact, to be done between November and March, given that the agreement with the Central Confederation was agreed at in March, to get 140 public bodies done between November and March, 
by definition, it is by definition is going to lead to what we are experiencing. It is, uh, Madam Speaker, I, I would encourage you to look at it in reverse. That of 140 public bodies doing this kind of reorganization, going from 325 to 16, it is a testimony to the process that we only have one or two, three or four, five or six. Madam Speaker, out of 140, this government is doing something that should have been done decades ago. In a previous presentation to Parliament, Dr. Clark had issued a warning that there would be no funding available in the 2023-2024 budget to provide payments to organizations in the public sector that had not signed the compensation restructuring agreement by the end of the current fiscal year. The Electronic Health Records EHR contract signing ceremony was held at the Ministry of Health and Wellness yesterday. A strategy centered on governance and capacity building, data management, information technology, as well as information and knowledge management for health analysis, advocacy, and strategic communications is being used to implement this contract at a time when there is an urgent need for greater integration of health systems. EHR is the wave of the future for the healthcare in Jamaica and the Caribbean, according to the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, who made this statement during his presentation during the Memorandum of Understanding signing. So the electronic health records are EHR, and we'll refer a lot to it now as EHR for short, is in fact the wave of the future in healthcare delivery. And for Jamaica, we are proud to be the only country in the Caribbean that is moving ahead with this with our critical partners. And we are proud to be the ones to not only pave the way, but hopefully to set the example for others to follow. We are willing to be the case study by which our brothers and sisters in the region and beyond have a basis on which to assess and to implement such an important game-changing uh, process. It's an 18-month program which will see the rollout of the system across 13 health facilities, uh, including right here at Spanish Town Hospital. Now, Spanish Town Hospital, Your Worship, is going to represent in public health over the next year, two years. Interdevelopment Bank for Latin America and CARICOM's General Manager for the Caribbean Country Department, Tariq Ali, explained the significance for the partnership and a breakdown of the EHR system. This is why the EHR system is so valuable. Access to reliable and updated health information for patients, medical staff, and health authorities is needed for that digital technology that will satisfy and translate into the upgraded management of health records. Introducing EHR in clinical practice will also reduce documentation time, leading to higher adherence to clinical protocols and fewer medication errors. By improving the aspect of the health sector, we will see strengthening of the public health system, superior clinical care processes, and better health outcomes. These and other benefits are why the IDB maintains a position that we must assist the region in its quest to promote better health conditions. By strengthening health systems, we can achieve sustainability of health services for the entire population through modernization and digital transformation. An investigation is being conducted by the Barnard Street Police into the death of a man who was shot and killed by an armed man near Railway Lane, Montego Bay, St. James, on Monday. The deceased is Travon Lawson, also known as Speng Weng, of a Montego Bay address. According to reports, Lawson was standing next to a group of people along Railway Lane around 7.10 p.m. when a white Toyota Axio drove up next to them. The occupants of the vehicle rolled down the windows and opened fire, striking Lawson many times before making their escape. The police were called and Lawson was found lying in a pool of blood with several gunshot wounds to his upper body. He was taken to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The investigation is ongoing. 
Andover in Lucy Hanover, the police is seeking the public's assistance in reuniting this woman with her family. She was found wandering in Actionish District in the parish this morning. She gave her name as Karen Robinson of a Lake Spent in Catherine address. Anyone who may be able to assist the police in reuniting Karen Robinson with her family is asked to contact the Lucy Police at 876 956 2333, Police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. And still over in the West, the shooting death of a businessman at a well known nightclub in Negril Westland on early Wednesday is being investigated by the Negril Police. He has been identified as O'Neill Smith, also known as San, a merchant from Westland's Good Hope district. He is 40 years old. According to reports, Smith went to a restaurant inside the scrub -dub nightclub in the grill around 4.30 in the morning while there were other patrons. Smith was about to place a lunch order when he was accosted by two armed men who shot him. When club goers sounded the alarm and called their police, the gunmen fled the scene. Smith was found lying in a pool of blood with multiple gunshot wounds when the police arrived. He was taken to the Savannah Lamar Hospital where he was declared dead. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang has assured the diplomatic corps that Jamaica is committed to providing the necessary legislative and budgetary support for sustainable growth and development, but this is contingent on restoring public order and public safety. Dr. Chang's remarks were made early today at the Jamaica Diplomatic Week celebration where he met with heads of the Diplomatic Corps in Kingston. Dr. Chang emphasized the government's investments in modernizing the security forces and pursuing strategic bilateral and multilateral partnerships to advance national interests and strengthen the regional and hemispheric security mechanism. Minister Chang highlighted several key strategic areas that the government has been focusing on over the last five years, including improved intelligence and investigative capacity for the security forces, organizational restructuring, relevant and robust legislation, human resource development, improved operational efficiency, investment in technology, and continued expansion of the Jamaica Eye National Surveillance Program. And those are the stories making the news this evening. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News. I'm Nicole Hales. Stay safe and thanks for watching.